Brian Ferentz, Kirk Ferentz's son, the offensive coordinator, has been under scrutiny. So the bullseye is to reach 325. It's in his contract, average 25 a game. So against Utah State, scored a couple touchdowns quickly, got the win, but. Just shy. Just shy. It's so close. You have to make up for that somewhere. You have to make up for that somewhere. <laughs> and, and like I mentioned, hard to get to 26 against the Cyclones. They've done it one time since 2018. What do you make of this whole island? I think I do very much appreciate the fact that this is all public knowledge about what he has to achieve. You know, players at the professional level have to experience this where everybody knows you get 1,000 yards rushing, you enter this bonus. It's a little public accountability, public expectation. So the fact that it's happening for a professional coach and Iowa, I think is a beautiful thing. With that being said, first two drives, they score a touchdown. Opening drive, yeah. passing touchdown. First time since like 1990-something yeah, yeah. for the <laughs> Iowa Hawkeyes. Fans had a lot of hope there early in that game, and then they settled back into the we play boring football, Iowa Hawkeyes. So what are they going to be? We don't know. But obviously a good one over there now. I think what the big thing you have to remember is they play complementary football. Yep. I mean, Phil Parker is one of the best defensive coordinators. They give up 17 points a game for like the last six years. So last year they had an offensive line that was kind of out of character for them. They had a young back, they had a quarterback that wasn't consistent. This year you got Cade McNamara. Now that young offense line is, is experienced. They got a talented back in the backfield in Caleb Johnson. Yeah. I, 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 again, don't expect them to score 40 a game. That's just not who they are. Right. But expect them to be much better this, the, as a team. They're not interested in stats. They're just trying to interest in winning they're, games. They're winning games. And that's what I'm offense. thinking. Like, like, Cade McNamara does not care about this guy's contract. No. <laughs> He's trying to collect Ws. You know what I mean? And he will. And not only did they get Cade, but they also got Eric All from Michigan, yeah, too. Who's 100%. A very talented tight end. So I don't think the players care about that. They just want to collect W's. But they only scored 25 points or more three times mm. a year ago. Yeah. Three times. Long road to that bonus. Yeah. Once, what, 33 against Northwestern and 27 twice. Once against Nebraska and against Rutgers. Mm -hmm. They were still winning saying. games. I'm like, somebody I'm set somebody you, up for we, failure. They're, they're going to win, they're gonna, they're gonna win nine or ten games this year. Yeah, yeah. The defense it always. just may not hit that 25 game yeah. and and yeah. mark. Yeah. And while, it, while the oh, gambling man. thing has hit both sides, it has really, really decimated Iowa State and what they. I think Oregon's got their hands full going to Texas Tech. I know Texas Tech lost to Wyoming. It's a long trip. Tyler Shuck, who is the former Duck quarterback, is the quarterback for Texas Tech. I just think it's one of those tough places to play, and, and I think it's a long trip. I know that Dan Lanning has a great team, Bo Nix, Bucky Irving. I mean, they're loaded. You just showed their highlights. But this is more about a team coming off of a disappointing loss. Everybody thinks Texas Tech sucks, and all of a sudden they show up ready to roll today. Uh, they tore a guy's ear off. <laughs> how, how did the you said that? Stan, yeah. can, that's true. It got caught in a helmet or something. Right? Oh, his helmet still hurts. Off. Stanford Steve is here. How did the fridge? The fridge was a little chilly on the picks last we won, week. We won our last two. Yeah, that's it, right? Oh, that's it. Momentum. There we go. We have Florida Momentum. State. Yeah. We had Duke. We're good. Yeah, you go. We're, 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 we're hot. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you, you got, what, yeah, looking at the games today, off the radar, Reese. But there's a game that has some feelings today. Charlotte and Coach Biff are going back to Maryland. Coach Biff coached high school football in Maryland a long time. There is some feelings in this game. Maryland might win by 100. They got skill guys all over the place. But I think Coach Biff and the boys could keep it close. We're going to take all those points in Charlotte. And then another one today. Oh, you got a little, you got a little sound effect. Yeah, yeah, you like that? That was cool. That was nice. Oh, oh, we popped it, it again. Yeah. Heard that a lot post-show. <laughs> yeah. um, another one, as bad as a team could look, Northwestern last week. Went to Piscataway, got it handed to them. Looking at their schedule, they had to look at their schedule going into today. There's, there's not a win. If they don't win today, they're not going to win a game this year. <laughs> They're wow. at home. They got to find something. We're going to take the Big Ten team against the team from El Paso. Northwest, not pretty, but just get the job done and we'll be all right. So, Northwestern, gutsy. And Charlotte plus the points. It's a gutsy pick going with. I Denver. won't say it again. Give okay. me Northwestern That's it. after That's it. today. This yeah. is it. This is their one chance. Football gods, I don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I have a, have Thanks a one for the confidence. Oh, Steve, I'm on your side. I appreciate it. I appreciate last two. You've hit the last two. Now we You're go. Hot. Since they played for the national championship after the 2009 season, this isn't good. The Fuck. win percentages. <laughs> are vastly different. I mean, Alabama's won five national titles the, since then. Texas is barely a 500, uh, just over 500 team. How many coaches? Four since then? Yeah. I mean, it's been, it's been a long grind. Yeah, you know, and the thing that jumped out at me is in that span, yeah. Alabama's worst season uh -huh. was better than Texas' best season oh, during wow. that time since then. Wow. 
Wow. Good work. But <laughs> just facts. But what do you think, LC? You're you're on the horns bandwagon here. Texas can upset Alabama if they have great defense and special teams. Two names to remember: Bert Auburn, the field goal kicker. Yeah. He kicked four against the Tide last year and three already in Oprah. And number two, Xavier Worthy. The wide right receiver. Yeah, yeah. He's just right. And during his, his career, he's averaged 14 yards per return, per yep. catch. Yep. And he's a great return man. Now, listen to this, Kurt. Texas has five Alabama former coaches with them. Five. Mm. Al they have five former Alabama oh, coaches. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know if it's going to help them. But it sure as hell can't hurt him. <laughs> <laughs> what are the odds of a dude named Burt Auburn yeah, coming yeah. in to try to beat Alabama? <laughs> yeah. I mean, what, he, he, that, that's perfect. You, you want to talk about being a legend? Yeah. If a dude named oh, Auburn for Texas in. beats yeah. Alabama? Last second field goal. Oh, man. Oh, that would be an all-time. I think one of the things that helps Texas, in my mind, in trying to win a game is it's tough to come in here and win a game. The reason I think they have a chance is Sark's in his third year. Go back. There are a lot of veterans on this team. Go back to two years ago. They're five and seven. Remember all those games that got away from them and how many embarrassing losses they endured and went through? Last year, they got a taste of what it feels like to eight and five and starting to head in a better direction. Now they're a veteran team. And all those warts and all those experiences of, of misery, mm -hmm. they're now a team that's seasoned. They're, they're more resilient third year of the culture. So I don't think they walk in here like most teams walk in there. They look down there, they see, yep, there's Coach Saban. Holy right. cow. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> look at this side. I don't think, I don't think, this, Al no. I don't think this Texas team is yeah. going to do that. No. I right. think they walk in there ready to roll, ready yeah. to play. I agree with you 100%. They have the mentality that we're as good, if not better, than Alabama because of what happened a year ago. They believe that they matched man for man for Alabama, and it just wasn't that Quinn Ewers got hurt. Don't forget, it was a very controversial oh. sack in the end zone yeah. to Bryce Young yeah, yeah. that kind of changed that game. So yeah. Texas is like, we can battle with these boys. And Coach, you talked about Xavier Worthy. Yes. They got a transfer receiver too. People call him A.D. Mitchell. It's Adonai Mitchell. No more AD. Hey, no more AD. Yeah. Adonai Mitchell can go. Yeah, yeah. 6'4", so, too. 100%. <laughs> so I think that they feel as though they have the firepower to beat Alabama. And with the firepower, you need somebody to be able to get the rock to him. And yeah. Quinn Ewers has certainly showcased that he can sling the ball around. Now, he's a whole new Quinn Ewers. Yeah. He's lost 30 pounds. He cut off the mullet. He's yeah. kind of more focused and everything like that. Yeah. But can last year's troubles where he would get a little reckless with his – you know, technique, yeah. let the ball fly because he has so much arm talent. Yep. Is that behind him? If it is, yeah. we're looking for a big Quinn Ewers to maybe Heisman finalist type conversation after this evening. If, if, he, <laughs> if he wins tonight. Hey, Texas had the best looking team I saw last year. All right. Well, speaking you know, of looking, thing, AD Mitchell, you know what people forget about AD Mitchell? What's that? National championship game a couple of years ago. Everyone remembers the Keely Ringo pick six to seal it for Georgia. Yeah. Donnie Mitchell had the go-ahead touchdown yeah. catch in he the did. fourth quarter against Alabama. Uh, yeah. 40 years. Wow. Yeah. So, over, under, different kind of play. You're not picking the game yet. What do you Smart. got? How are you playing this? Kirk touched on it earlier about the, the guys that are going to be the factors in the game. It's the fat nasties up front. Yeah. You know, Texas has those D tackles. They rotate four deep. They do. Bama, Tommy Reese wants to run the ball. Mm. I think 27 points wins this game. Mm. So, I'm going to take the under. I'm going under 54 for that one. You're going uh, back to you, the two and four? You're, what you're was that complaining. all about? They just put that right on your face. I don't know if you saw the TV. <laughs> no, they what, slid what it in do? underneath. They said, this guy was two and four last week. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that. That's what they said. It's fine. I don't like that. I'm not running and hiding <laughs> from it. No, no you're about to it. go six and oh this week. Yeah. <laughs>